Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Aon PLC, ticker AON. Over the next five minutes, I'll discuss both the valuation of this company and what I think of the business quality. This company is in the insurance industry. It looks like it's around $70 billion in market cap. So it says that they are a professional services firm. They provide advice, solution, focused on risk retirement and health worldwide. Commercial risk solution, realtor brokerage, it doesn't really tell me much. Um, risk insights, cover wallet, strategic design consulting services on retirement programs. Really doesn't tell me what they're doing. Okay, so their beta less than one is a little interesting um, because for their S&P 500, so that means they're about 12% less volatile than the average S&P stock. Return on invested capital. So first thing immediately you can see is they have 20 straight years of profits because they don't have any losses or negative numbers on this return on invested capital. That's a good sign. You can note there's not really much stability, although they've been increasing returns on invested capital since 2010, um, up to a recent 16%, but really in that 10, 11, 12% range. Um, not super stable though. Uh, 10 year median returns, return on assets of 4.7%, return on equity of 24%, which is very nice. And that ROC in the double digits, very strong. So I like seeing that double digit return on invested capital and 24% for return on equity. Um, unfortunately, we see immediate concerns here for the future. So their revenue growth here at 1%, asset growth at 1% is not very good. That's, that's very bleak. You can see that the revenues are basically flat over the last decade. Um, high returns on equity aren't really valuable if you can't grow. Um, so if you're not growing, then your returns on equity is really just fixed. Um, so that's not a good sign. Now they are growing EPS at 7%, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's due to like buybacks or something, because if they're not growing revenue, where is this coming from? Um, your PE of 55 means this company is almost undoubtedly highly overvalued. If you can't grow revenue, then you're not worth 55 PE. Um, let's see what we have here on the income statement. So shares diluted. You do see that they're buying back shares. They bought back about 33%, about a third of the shares over the last decade. So that's a good sign. And that's really helped grow your EPS. So your EPS has been growing, but like your net income hasn't been growing. So your net income was at 1.1 million in 2013, and it was 1.2 million in 2021. This is not a lot of growth. Now there is a dip from 2020. So it suggests that maybe in 2020, they were off a little better. Um, and that this recent dip isn't reflective of their overall business, but this is still pretty weak. It's not like the revenue's gone anywhere. So all of this growth in EPS is really coming from the buybacks. Um, let's look at our balance sheet. Um, so your PPE, despite growing your not growing your revenue, your PPE has been increasing, not a significant amount, but it's increased some. Um, Let's see, what else do we have here? Long-term debt has doubled from 4 billion to 8 billion. So they've increased the leverage a little bit. Um, so basically that's how they're getting their return. They've increased their leverage. They have bought back some shares. Um, they've basically recapitalized the business because you can see that in the income statement, they didn't really grow the business. So it's not like things have grown much. Um, cash flow statement, anything interesting here? So we do see that there's stock-based compensation. They're making a decent amount of stock-based compensation. However, so you're in the 200 million to 400 million range for stock-based compensation, but then the buybacks each year has been in the 1 billion to 3 billion range. So no matter what, they're buying back three, four, five times their uh, stock-based compensation every year. So it is driving the, the stock shares outstanding down every year. So you like to see that. Um, they're also paying a growing dividend, which is basically doubled, but you're getting a vast majority of your cash returns from this buyback. But like, let's think about what these numbers are. Your numbers here are, you know, you have 3.3 billion, 4 billion. Um, generously, we'll use the most recent numbers where it was $4 billion um, in cash paid back to shareholders. But this company has a market cap of $70 billion, which is just not workable. So um, let's bring in our little calculator here. And you can see, if we take these numbers, it doesn't really add up. So you just say 4 billion divided by 70. And so you're getting a 5.7% return on your cash flow. And since you're not growing your revenue, that's like your entire return is 5.7%. And that's because you have such this high PE ratio. So it's really not worth um, what this company's priced at. So 
I wouldn't even put this company on my watch list because the revenue growth is so low. Despite having a strong return on equity, it's basically useless because they're not growing. Return on equity, there's no difference between sh for shareholders if return on equity is 5%, 10%, or 50% if you don't have growth. All the growth of this EPS is driven by the declines in EPS. Uh, in declines in the shares outstanding with you know basically a slight boost from revenue and a slight boost from operating leverage but it's way too minimal to justify a pe of 55. i mean this company wouldn't even deserve to trade at a pe of 15 let alone 55. so um for me this company is a pass it doesn't get on my watch list despite having a lot of signs of what could be a high quality business without growth that high quality is not worth paying for so for me aeon is a pass on quality and a pass on valuation it won't end up on my watch list Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button at the bottom of this video. Click subscribe. Hit that bell so you get notifications as I upload new videos. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees. Start building wealth.